What's up everybody and welcome back to another video and it's me They call me heat and we back with another video I'm a music producer of over 10 plus years and on this channel right here I teach producers how to create the best boom bap style beats a lot of people ask you know how do you arrange a beat for for boom bap like it's, it's not it's not really different from a normal arrangement um, unless you're speaking of like a R&B song where they have pre-courses, bridges, things like that. Although a boom bap beat can have those things, you know, an intro, a chorus, a pre-chorus, a verse first after the hook or whatever. This structure just depends on what the artist wants to do. But for the purpose of trying to have it ready for an artist in a song form, I structure, there's a specific way that I structure it. Now you don't necessarily have to take my way or my build or how I usually do it, but it's a starting point for you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I go about arranging boom bat beats and how I get them ready for an artist to rap or sing on it or do whatever they need to do on that track. Let's go ahead and get into it. If this is your first time watching, make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on all notifications as well just so you don't miss any more videos. I would hate for you to miss this great content. All right, if you're a supporter of the channel, you already have these files from Patreon. So if not, become a supporter of the channel, patreon.com slash they call me heat. You can download the files, follow along, build up, or if you've already made a beat, now we can walk through on how to build the beat that you have up there. All right. So yeah, let's get into arranging this beat. Let's go. With the range in a boom bat beat, you have to know what you want to go for. Are you going for, you know, just a freestyle, kind of just let it loop through, because that's what the artist wants, or do you want to break it down and you want to drop out kicks, you want to drop out the sample, you want to drop out hi-hats, put effects in certain little areas for the, you know, for the beat to just flow and sound good. I'm going to show you how to do that. So in my case today with this beat, you guys have already heard this, I made this in the last video. <laughs> to show you is how I arrange it for an artist and get it ready for a rapper or somebody to do something on it. Sometimes I'll use the sample chops for the intro. Um, I'll use a piece of the sample for the intro of the beat just to kind of intro it in instead of coming right in with the beat. You know I kind of give something at the beginning to hype you up for the track. With this one I, I didn't use my actual chops. I used the sample and I just grabbed an eight bar like piece of the sample which sounds like this. So that's my intro right there. That's what I'm gonna use for the intro before anything comes in. Now we have to figure out, do we wanna go intro into the hook or do we wanna go intro into the verse and what makes sense? For me, I usually like to do the verse first just because it doesn't make sense to bring everything in for the listener, just pound them with everything at the jump. I like to kinda let the beat build a little bit and that's, it just, it's more exciting that way for me and that's just how I like it. Sometimes I have songs where the artist wants to come right into the, the hook or the chorus, but in this case, I want to build intro, verse, and then into the hook, the exciting part of the beat. So I always build my beats hook first. You put everything together, all your sounds, you crowd it up with sounds, and then you duplicate all that, and then you start taking things out, and that's what I've done. I have pretty much, you know, a, a loop of everything going. I've started building and dropping certain things out, as you can see, I'm missing, missing pieces here versus what's here. Um, so I have my intro already. Now I have to make the beat exciting and the artist needs to know that hey this is the intro and we're about to go into something else. So I usually do that by adding like a drum fill, uh, uh, sound effect, some type of transition effect and that's what I did here. I'm going to play it for you so you can hear what I'm talking about. that does is it gets the not only the listener but the artist excited to be like 
I'm about to come in hard. I'm about to come in swinging with these bars. I'm really going to come hard on this track. And that's what you want to do is you want to get them excited within the first few seconds of the track. You want to, they say you want to attract the listener within 30 seconds. If you have a good sample or good, good chops or a good drum pattern that you're playing at the beginning, great, because you want to lock them in within the first 30 seconds. So I've started now, I'm going into the verse. So now we have those transitions there. We got the drum fill and that sound effect. Now I'm gonna go into the verse. The verse, I just dropped the bass out for the first part. no bass um, for the first four bars there's nothing really going on but for the next four bars which is the eight bar mark I have a reverse symbol going and that's just something else again like I said to keep make the artist ready or to know that something else is about to happen something some change is about to happen something I learned early on from watching early hit boy uh, interviews was that he changes his beats up every four to eight bars to keep the listener listening or wanting to listen that something different is happening so that's what you know what we want to do between four to eight bars you want to have something changing something different um, and that's what I have so I have this reverse crash and then the bass comes in and let me show you what I mean now I can make this even more exciting I can drop the drums out for that first right on the one and then they come right back in let me show you Those are just cool little tricks that you can do to the track to just just subtle things to just make it exciting and you know keep it going and and when the rapper is rapping or they're writing they're like oh that that drop right when I say whatever I'm about to say right there it's gonna all match and flow together and that's what you want you want the artist to be excited off of what you're doing you don't want the beat to be boring because then they won't know what to do and no one wants to listen to a boring beat so if you have things changing and you know, good transitions good drum fills things like that the track will come together. I have a synth that came in as well, but I'm gonna take that out. I'm not gonna do anything with that right just yet. I want the synth, I wanna save that synth only for the chorus or the hook. The horns, I think I'll put those in towards the end of the verse to kinda of lead into the hook. And then we're gonna put another transition in there, so let me show you what I mean by that. So this is the next eight bars. We're working on the next eight bars of the verse. So we got the first eight bars where no bass, no horns, no synth just drums sample and an open hat and then it moves over into now the bass comes in and then the last four bars of that we're gonna add that horn in Since we already have a reverse crash, I can use that same crash for the ending tail going back into the chorus or the hook. So what I did for the last four bars is I took out the drums. There's no drums right there and I know it's kind of sudden, but I'm going to show you what, what, what we can do to make that stand out. Now we have the transition going from the verse back into the hook with the reverse crash in the field. Now I'm going to show you how I would go about building a second verse. Same exact concept. I would just copy and paste everything from that hook, and then I'm going to, you know, drop everything through the through the verse. So it doesn't have to be complicated at all. It can be easy. You can really do this fairly quickly. Now I've showed you guys in the past how to count bars in you know when creating the beats. So now I just have to figure out what do I want to do for the second verse? What haven't I done in the first that I could do in the second? Oh, I could take out the drums in the first eight four bars of the second verse so that it's just straight sample and bass or bass and just sample. So we'll try a couple of different things out here. We can put the first little transition that we made at the beginning we can put that here because everything's locked in time and on point. So we just copy it and move it over.
Okay, so I've gotten rid of the bass and I got rid of the drums for at least the first uh, three bars of the beginning of the verse. So it sound, comes in sounding like this. Now for that spot, I didn't necessarily have to put a transition because the drums came back in and the drums at the end of the drums, it sounds like something else is about to happen. So I don't have to put anything there overdo it to really make it just to do it can be very subtle subtle things go a long way so the drums will be my transition in back into the next four bars and the next four bars will only have the drums the sample the open hat the horns and everything else no bass no synth anything like that just yet until the next start of the next eight bars so let me show you what that's going to sound like <laughs> So now at the end of the last eight bars of the second verse, we have to figure out what are we going to do? How are we going to get this back into the hook? How are we going to make them and get them excited and get them happy for the next eight, the, the, you know, the hook to come back in? I usually just find another drum fill, you know, or I find another transition. So I got the symbol, the ride symbol in there, the rising symbol sounds like this. Time stretch it just to make it fit, you know, on time. And, uh, put it on the mixer, turn it down a little bit, and now when we go from the second verse back into the hook, we don't have to do a lot, and I can snatch maybe a, a transition sound like uh, you know that same transition sound we've been using. Now I can put that in there as well, back and you know going back into the hook, and this is what it comes out sounding like. <laughs> how you arrange a boom bat beat. I hope this inspires somebody out there. I hope this helped many of you out there. This process isn't really something that really has to be, you know, you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to, there's not a lot that goes into it. It's just about making it exciting, making sure that there's enough room for the artist to do what they have to do. And then, you know, making sure that um, they know what is what and where it's at, you know? Um, so you don't have to be like, oh, I, I think I put the hook right here. I think I put the, you have to know, you have to know the separation. Like I said, the hook is where the most is going on. So you have everything going on in the course of the hook. And then when the verse comes in now, a lot of stuff is stripped out, just giving the artist room to now be free and say what they have to say. Then come back in with the exciting part of the, the, the course and the hook with everything going on. So yeah. Again, I hope this inspired you guys to go create. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in with me. Again, if you're a patron, you do have these files already, so you can rewind the video if you didn't know. Go back, follow up, you know, follow along with what I'm doing, all right? So until next time, I'm about to hear y'all.